Hi guys, uh, this is the Betamax man here, and uh, today we've got an N, uh, a uh, NEC um, Beta VCR. Uh, now, the downside is that this is a mono uh, machine, but still, uh, it is a Betamax machine, so we're definitely going to work on it and uh, see if we can get this thing fixed. Um, now, I'm actually going to take a break from the uh, Sony SLHF R30, um, uh, and uh, so I'm going to uh, I have to really start thinking about what's going on with that one and, and uh, start doing some research as to what might be wrong with that one. Is I'm still not quite sure, so I have to figure that out. But uh, I thought I would just do um, uh, another machine that we'd take a look at. Um, this one is uh, model number VC uh, in 20 EU, which is a a mono um, machine, of course, but. This one, um, when I worked on this thing before, uh, we got it to, to play back tapes, uh, and it rewound, fast forward, it went through all the modes, everything worked, uh, but there was a problem with the picture, and that problem with the picture is actually not caused from any of the, it's not caused from the video board, it's actually caused by the uh, servo. So the servo needs to be worked on, uh, and that's what's causing the picture to uh, look so bad. But um, we're going to um, take a look here. I've got a tape that we're going to use here. And uh, we'll just test it out here. This test tape has been chewed many times. So hopefully it'll play uh, okay. It's got a problem with the belt. So we're going to need to do, uh, I'm going to have to order some belts for this particular machine because uh, it's got a belt that's slipping, which is why the cassette uh, wasn't, uh, it was having trouble going in. So let's hit play. Okay, now we don't even uh, have... Oh, it actually appears to not be working anymore, huh? I wonder what's going on there. The uh, seems like the capstan's not working. Um, let's try another tape. Let's try uh, a tape that isn't uh, chewed up. Maybe that's the problem. Maybe the tape had something on it. We'll try my Star Trek tape here. So let's try this one and see. Maybe there's something on the head that's sticking to the head. Okay, so it's playing the tape but it's not playing it correctly and as you can see that this definitely has a servo problem um you can see that the um the head switching pulse is not working correctly
you can uh, hear the uh, so this one has a servo problem let's go ahead and put in a different tape because I think this particular testing tape uh, is bad so let's get a different cassette in here and uh, I've got plenty of uh, cassettes so I just gotta find one that we can use to uh, um, yeah let's just find one that we can use so let me get another tape so we'll try this tape because I know that the tape is not going to be chewed I can use uh, one of my good tapes because we know it's not going to get chewed now just in case it does get chewed this is not the best copy I have I have another copy that is in better condition so if this one gets chewed it's not that big of a deal but it's one I can use for a test tape Okay, so we got a servo issue. We do have a, a servo problem on this one. And it's going to stop. So there's probably not just the servo adjust we got a servo problem but I also think that we have a capstan issue as well and what I'm really starting to think is that maybe the uh, capstan uh, okay there we go come on Yeah, that belt is really starting to slip, isn't it? And now the, the door seems to be sticking. So, this thing was working. Uh, I did have it working uh, at one time. down and this is actually a capstan problem as well so I think it's got two issues uh, it's got a capstan uh, servo issue and it's also got a capstan so we've got a servo issue and a capstan that is not working so now is the let's eject it And the doors came back down. So, we need to get into this thing. We need to get in and uh, we'll see what we can do. Because it might be um, simple, easy uh, repair. So let's get my meter out here, and I'm going to test some of them. I want to test the ones that are, are in the uh, servo circuitry here. And these are 50 volt at 1 microfarad. And those actually do have a tendency uh, to fail. 
they do have a problem. They do have a tendency to fail those 50 volt at uh, one microfarad. So let's get this up at an angle where I can work on it, where I can look at, at it. And we'll just see what we got here. So I want to check the ones over in here. And here they are. do got uh, one that's bad and wow we do we have uh, two of them that are bad over there let's check some of these other ones yeah so we do have bad ones uh, even though it is working although it's not working uh, at its best. And you can still hear a little wow and flutter um, on the um, music part, the audio uh, of it. bad and these two are bad so I'm gonna have to change out all of them uh, in this area of the board so because this is where the servo is and uh, this is the area where the capstan uh, plugs into also the area where the uh, head drum plugs into is over here so we can check some of those these are 25 volt at 47 and then I've got some 50 volt at 1 microfarad so let's just see if any of the other ones might have failed besides these four caps. I've changed out three capacitors and uh, now the servo is out of adjustment again. Um, which this happens sometimes when you change capacitors in the uh, servo circuitry and so this is pretty normal that we'll have to go in and do an adjustment. So the uh, two, cha two caps, or the three capacitors that we changed, uh, were these three right here. And uh, they were uh, 50 volt capacitors. Um, one of them was uh, one microfarad, and the other two were uh, 10 microfarad capacitors and we've changed those so now we're going to do uh, an adjustment on the servo board okay I'm just going to do adjustment here Yeah. 
Well, it looks like I've got a, a good uh, stable picture now and uh, seems to be playing properly now. So this was just a um, just some bad capacitors that were uh, in the uh, capstan uh, servo. Uh, this case it wasn't the drum servo but uh, it was the um, capstan. So this is now playing perfectly. Um, we've got the now the flickering that you're seeing is actually in the movie itself. This tape's been chewed several times, so. I don't know why my monitor does that, but this monitor sometimes will flicker like that. And it does that on my other machines too, so it's not the machine, it's just the display. This one's been chewed a couple times though, I think, this particular tape. Oh, tracking adjustment, that's what's going on. Needs to have the adjustment on the tracking knob here. I think I'll do that, I'll just adjust the... We'll do an adjustment on the tracking because the tracking is just a hair off. But we'll still, I'll still work with it and I'll still get it fine-tuned. Still got to get it all fine-tuned, but uh, as far as uh, I can tell and what I can see is that this machine is operating um, good enough to play tapes. But we need to get it better than good enough. We need to get it perfect. We need to get it to where it's perfectly tracking because we now got the speed is now correct and our switch pulses are now correct so here's what I've done on this I have changed multiple capacitors uh, we've changed three caps or four caps in the uh, servo circuitry and then we replaced a few caps in the uh, head amplifier so the head amp is actually on this board in this area over here um, and that's pretty much all I can do. Uh, it's working pretty good now. Uh, this thing is uh, performing like it should. The only, the only bad thing about this particular machine uh, is the fact that I've got to order a belt for the cassette housing. The cassette housing needs to have a new belt. Uh, because as you can see during the video, it was... The belt was slipping uh, multiple times uh, but now that I've been using this machine the belt seems to be working okay but the belt will is still bad and still needs to be replaced because the minute this VCR stops being used and then you go to reuse it that belt's gonna slip again so that belt needs to be replaced but literally there's only one belt in this whole unit that uh, does operations everything else is uh, direct drive 
uh, motors and uh, so the way that this machine was designed uh, was pretty good actually I think that uh, NEC did a pretty good job uh, on this thing so we've changed these up here as you can see these are all all the ones that are not this light blue color are the ones that we changed so as you can see we've changed let's see how many do we take out uh, we got three four uh, five six seven eight nine nine ten capacitors so these are the all the old ones right here these are all the bad ones that we changed so that's quite a few caps that we pulled out of that unit two four six eight uh, no we've changed more than that we changed you can see there's at least 12 caps there but uh, anyway it's now performing like it should now I did not change uh, the whole board I only changed the ones that were registering bad and when I was taking them out the bad ones some of them had been leaking because you could smell that that fishy smell you know Basically, here's what I've done to get this thing working like it should. I've done two things. I've replaced capacitors, and I've done some ser adjusting with the servo board. I've adjusted not only the capstan servo, but I have also adjusted the head servo. And yes, it would have been easier if I had it hooked up to a scope. It's not really slipping, the belt's not really slipping now, but... There you go. Anyway, it's uh, performing beautifully, so... I'm very happy with it, and, uh, you know... It's got a good picture. So I'm going to go put another tape in here and I'm going to do some adjustments uh, to the uh, tracking. Okay, so I've been working on this pretty much all day and uh, got the tracking dialed in. Uh, and I actually replaced some more caps <clears throat> uh, because... I noticed that my tracking control didn't matter what I did, what direction I turned it wasn't still wasn't tracking quite right, and uh, there were still um, there were some problems on that particular part of the board, and I thought that you know, hmm, I'll test those caps. Tested them, they tested fine. Huh. Well, I'm going to replace them anyway. And I did. And the tracking is perfect. So, the ones that I changed were, uh, I think there are four of these, but one of them I had clear over. I think I had four of these, but one of them fell on the floor, so I'll have to get it later. But anyway, uh, they can go in the garbage, but these are, uh, two of them were 16 at 100 UF, and then, uh, there was one that was a 25, um, at 100 UF, so, there we go, throw those away. So, with all this being said and done, oh, and the one more thing, I was mentioning earlier in the video about how this thing only has one belt, I was wrong, it's got two belts, it's got a mechanical counter, and I forgot about the mechanical counter that this thing has, so it does have two belts, it's got one for the counter, 
and one for the cassette housing to uh, lower and raise the cassette, you know, for the cassette that goes in and out of the machine. So let's uh, even set the clock. So let's get this thing in here and we'll see how good this picture quality is. And yes, it's all back together. And let's go to the scene. Here we go. 007. The world is not enough. <laughs> oh, this is a, a super beta recording, so it's actually going to have some black, little black specks going through the screen. And uh, that's because uh, this is a super beta recording trying to play it back on a regular recorded tape. And uh, you can see how bad the picture quality is when you're playing a Super Beta recording on a, on a non-Super Beta. So the, the colors aren't quite right and the black lines you'll get. Now some, some of these non-Super Beta will play. Some of the, the newer ones from like the mid 80s uh, will play Super Beta recordings. Uh, even though they may not be super beta machines, but the really old um, beta machines won't play back super beta. But as you can see, the quality is good though. It's got good quality, even though this, this is a super beta tape, but we can put in a different, uh, we'll put a different tape in. I guess I could put one of my Disney tapes in, and uh, we can play one of those um but uh, anyway yeah it's it's performing very well and uh, every once in a while uh, that belt will slip and I'll have to give it a little push a gentle help to load and unload the tape but we'll get a belt for it but I got to order one from eBay and I'm still searching for a belt for this, um, so let me get, let's see, there's other tapes that I have, I have some factory recorded tapes that I could play. Yeah, how about we can play? Big Super Sleeping Beauty. Now, I don't know what the, uh, this Sleeping Beauty was, uh, it's an, a used copy that I had. And then I was able to buy it again, and I bought a brand new sealed copy. So I actually picked up a sealed copy of Sleeping Beauty. And I opened it, and that one actually goes into my collection. This one is one that I'm going to be selling. So this is just going to be going into my... I put used copy, that way I don't confuse it with my brand new copy that I have. Of course, once you open the thing, it becomes used, but... This is a used copy, so let's play this. This one plays okay, except the tracking is a little off on this tape. This tape, not all of the factory tapes were uh, recorded um, at the proper tracking. Sometimes the tracking is just a hair off. But, there we go. So you don't get any of the uh, black lines or the discoloration. That happens with uh, so if it's right in the center, 
So I just turn it to the left just a little bit and that allows it to uh, play properly. Uh, this tape is worn. You can tell that this tape definitely has some wear and tear on it. Uh, and the the tape will play just fine but it you know you can tell it's been watched many times you know um which is another reason why i'm getting rid of it and of course the tapes that have uh some wear on them uh i will of course i will mention that and let people know that hey you know this movie does work and you can play all the way through but it may have some wear and tear on the image quality because it's been played so many times but uh, I can't show too much of the screen because I don't want to get hit with a copyright from uh, YouTube I, I don't want that to happen because I had one channel taken down already and uh, that was a couple years ago I had it taken down so I'm very careful now as to you know not get hit with a copyright <laughs> but I will show it for a little like a couple of seconds you know I'm thinking maybe I should watch this been a long time since I watched this film I think I fell asleep watching this thing I don't think I've ever seen this one all the way through to be honest with you I think I did fall asleep one day watching it. The last time I watched this was at my old house. So the other house I was at was the last time I watched this. So that was at least, yeah, that was like a year ago. Because I, I got, I think I moved in, I don't remember exactly. I know it's been several months since I moved into this house, but, um... Anyway, yeah, I mean, that quality's pretty dang good, I would say. Um, not bad at all, you know. I just think, uh, this thing is performing beautifully. And it rewinds just fine. It just works beautifully, and fast forward works now, and uh, rewind. And this uses a solenoid, uh, just like the Sony's do. Uh, in fact, the heads are made by Sony. You'll find that there's a lot of Sony parts in the NEC beta machines. Um, NEC actually did manufacture their own units, but they didn't manufacture all their parts. In fact, NEC's chassis is a cross between the 7-Eleven um, uh, D uh, chassis uh, there was another chassis that I can't think of at the moment, but it was very similar to, well, kind of the 7-Eleven D. It's it's different from the from uh, 7-Eleven D, but it, it's very similar. Um, uh, kind of, uh, yeah. But uh, and yeah, this machine is. You know definitely have some scratches and stuff on the top it's not you know it's not in perfect condition but it, it is all there the doors are there you know the doors are there which the doors are usually missing on this particular model I don't know why but it seems like the doors either the front door or the top door panel is missing and I think this one actually was shipped to me with a missing door. I think I took that off of a scrap machine 
and put it on this one. And I think that, you know, this is definitely one of the... This machine actually kind of reminds me of the Sony SL23 and the SL2400 uh, models. Kind of a slim line chassis type thing, you know. You can see how it's, you know, maybe, what, two and a half inches, three inches tall? Uh, compared to other betas, which can be anywhere from, you know, four to five inches tall. And this one's, you know, kind of small. And it's got the man manual counter, so the, the manual uh, readout, which is also common on the 2300, the Sony 2300s. They also had a, just a mechanical, um counter but this is definitely a lot like a lot like the um, uh, Sony uh, 2300 uh, as far as uh, the the looks go because it's, it's got the same kind of features you know and it, all the buttons are in one spot and I don't know it just kind of reminds me of the 2300 now this would have been manufactured anywhere from 1980 to probably 82 is what I'm going to say. And I don't know if there's even, there might be a manufacturing date on the back here. We can take a look. Let's see if we can find a manufacturing date on here. Because I bet you this was made in probably between 19... 80 and 1982 is what I'm going to say that this was probably um, uh, built. Um, yeah, I don't really see anything that tells me when it was manufactured. Uh, I could look it up online, but I'm pretty sure this was made from between 1980 and, and 82. It might have been 83 when they made them. But it's a mono, you know, that's what sucks, it's a mono, but I've got a, a Y adapter, and that gives me, uh, splits it into two channels, so I've got a left and a right speaker. So if you ever use a mono machine to do your transfers, make sure you buy a Y adapter. Because the Y adapter is going to split that signal so you have a left speaker and a right speaker. If you don't have this, you're only going to get audio on one, one side, which is your left side. So if you don't, if you're playing a, a mono machine and you don't have a Y adapter, you're only going to have the left channel. So, when you're transferring tapes and stuff, make sure that you have this adapter. But I really don't see anything that's uh, stamped on here. Looks like somebody's spray painted it. There's like also a, a spill on the bottom side. Or maybe somebody just spilled paint or something and this was sitting in a garage or something, you know. But I think that anybody who, you know, wants to buy this from me, um, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask 200 for it, uh, because all the time that I've spent working on this thing, I've spent way too much time on it. I spent more time on this one than I have the other beta machines, and I haven't even cleaned it yet. That was just getting it working. So I haven't even done any of the uh, cleaning inside that I normally do. But I will clean it on the inside before I sell it. And outside too. We'll use Novus 3, 2, and 1 on it. But it's playing beautifully, and uh... 
And now, now we, we don't know how. We've never done anything without men. Jim, that's fine. Now, that's a people who never suspect. But who wash? And crew? Oh, we love you, Jim. I'll take care of the baby. Yeah, good, good movie, I think. Yeah, because if you put it back in the center, you can see that the, the tracking is just a hair off. When, But this has been adjusted. I've adjusted the tracking, so the tracking is perfect on this thing. I used uh, one of my tapes recorded off the 1000, the 007 tape. I recorded this on my SLH up 1000 uh, a few days ago, so I used this as my reference tape and uh done the alignment with this so and also the tape guides were also loose and uh so somebody had been monkeying with the uh, uh with the entrance uh guide but anyway so let's that's it on this machine uh, the thing I like about this one is that you don't get the static sound. If you have no input, uh, most of the VCRs from the 80s, if you didn't have anything coming into the machine, you would have this buzzing uh, static sound. The static sound that you would get from a TV that doesn't have any signal. And so it, you'd stop the tape and you'd hear that you know that hissing sound but uh, with this one it, it doesn't uh, make that annoying sound when there's no input so that's kind of nice I like that about it might as well just rewind this tape all the way I don't like the manual counters because they don't give you uh, a uh, hours minutes and seconds I think they just give you like a minute and a um, a second, but they don't give you an hour, you know. So I, I don't I never liked these mechanical uh, tuners or mechanic counters. I mean the the counters. I never liked these mechanical counters, but. Anyway, so yeah, I've got a few tapes that I will be selling, you know, online. And this, some of the, some Disney tapes, they actually printed um, the title on the side like this. Not all of them. Not all of the Sony tapes. I mean, not all the Disney tapes. Not all Disney beta tapes had writing on the side. Some of them just had the paper label on top and that was it but some of them they did actually have you know they have the, the label so that's going to be it guys on this video and uh, pretty much that, that's it basically um this machine is is now you know fully uh operational except for needing to replace that belt for the cassette housing which i'll also have to do before i sell it so i just got a couple things i gotta do is clean the inside and out and replace both of those belts the counter belt it's still good so I'll probably just replace the um, cassette housing belt and then I won't worry about it so anyway but uh, I will see you guys in the next uh, video and uh, don't forget to hit that like and uh, subscribe button and uh, I'll look forward to uh, doing a lot more repair videos I've got some projects that I'm planning on getting. I'm wanting to get a couple more uh, beta machines that I haven't yet done on this channel. Um, I'm actually looking for a 750 uh, for me, for my personal collection. So 
If anybody knows or has a SLH of 750 that they would like to sell, uh, let me know. I'd like to buy it. I'll buy broken machines, so I buy broken ones. So it doesn't matter if they work or not, I'll still buy them. So, anyway. Also, yes, I do do repairs for other people. I've had a couple people ask me, and, and I have on my channel before. I've done uh, videos on a customer's uh, machine. So, yes, I do repair machines for other people. So, because I've had people ask me that on this channel. So, anyway, that'll be it for this one. And I'll see you later. Bye-bye.